Hello, how y'all doing? I'm going to talk to you today about the crate challenge. Now, this is a warning. Now, when I saw that at first glance, I knew that it was dangerous. I mean, there's no other word for it than just, just dangerous. That's the only word for that stunt. It's dangerous. I knew it was dangerous when I first saw it. Now, I know something about balance. I, I really do. I know something about balance and, you know, what it takes to to uh, do certain things. Now, when I was in high school, in the ninth grade, I couldn't do any of the flips and walkovers that the teacher required. Why? Because I was a poor Appalachian girl and I didn't have the training. We couldn't, that mother could not afford to, for the, to take us to any of these schools for gymnastics. And actually, we, we shouldn't have been doing these type of stunts in, in gym class anyway. Walkovers, handstands, we shouldn't have been doing it. Because nobody had the training, okay? But I sure didn't. But as I got older, about um, 11th to 12th grade, what I did, uh, I bought the books. Now, I didn't buy the books. I went to the library and got the books on introduction to gymnastics and introduction to modern dancing. That's what they called it back then, modern dancing. I and so what this I read both of the books did everything from cover to cover now like I said it was an introduction okay that's what the books were uh, I followed the instructions the stretching instructions the balance instructions because that's what you have to do before you even do any of those so-called tricks you have to stretch your muscles you have to balance you have, you have to balance so I went through the books and by the time I finished the books, I could split, I could do a handstand, and I could do a walkover. And I could do a few other forward row, backward row. I could do a few things after I read those books. Now, but like I said, they, they were total introductory books. You know, they taught you how to balance, uh, uh, stretch your muscles, etc. Um it's like I said, so I know something about balance. I know what it takes to do certain things. I'm not a super athlete, but I do know something. The problem with those crates is that, first of all, those crates are not made for that. Those crates are not made for standing. Okay, even if you just take one of those crates and say, okay, I'm going to use it as a platform so I can, you know, put this nail in the wall. You have to be careful with that because it's hard to even stand on one crate because of the type of plastic that it's made from. It is not made to interlock. Those crates are not made to interlock. They just molded from some type of flimsy and cheap plastic. They're not made for standing on. They're only, I mean, they're only good for what they are, storage crates. You, I mean, even if you put one crate on top of the other, they may collapse and you haven't stood on, you just put stuff in it. If you put one crate on top of the other, they still may fall because of the type of plastic they are made of. And they're not made for anything else but storage. They're not made to be walked on like that. You can, like I said, you can't even use them to say, okay, I'm gonna use this as a platform so I can put the curtains up or so I can put a nail in the wall or something. You're gonna fall if you use that. I mean, I've known that for years, that if you step on those crates, uh, and you're just trying to put the curtains up or if you're trying to put a nail in the wall, you're going to fall. I've known that for years. So that's why I've never stepped on them, y'all. <laughs> the other problem is that you have to be maximum of 120 pounds or 130 pounds to get on those crates like they're getting. You shouldn't be any more than 130 pounds. You should be very slender. And what I'm seeing is a lot of big fat people, a lot of big fat chunky people uh, uh, getting on those things and they have no balance because that's what I learned uh, when I got those books is balance they don't have no balance they have no sense of balance uh, they're big and fat they're too muscular uh, they're just not used to doing that um, but they have no sense of balance okay a lot of people are falling on their spine and if you fall on your spine there's nothing the doctors can do about it nothing they cannot repair your spine all they can do is give you a bunch of morphine to control the pain they cannot repair your spine 
I repeat that doctors cannot do anything if you fall on your spine whether you fall on your spine from a rooftop while you're trying to clean the gutters or whether you fall on, the, on your spine from these crates the doctors can't do anything if you if your spine is hit with such force that you are paralyzed from the neck down or if you're not paralyzed the doctors can't do anything about that pain except to give you morphine they cannot repair your spine I know it's a lot of people are falling on the back of their head they're falling back here that can be either death or paralysis take your pick when you fall on the back of your head like that the way they were doing you're either going to die you either die or are you going to be paralyzed from the neck down you take your pick now that could be instant death if you fall on your back like that because you're landing with such force you're landing with a whole lot of force you're going from what one or two steps and you're landing a lot of force on your back bam you're landing with a lot of force to your back and your head is hitting the other crates okay and, and those crates are sharp sharp plastic the back of your head is hitting those crates and you may either be that could be instant death or it could be paralysis from the neck down now that's not to mention I see people's arms flailing I see people's legs flailing uh, you know there's no telling what kind of injuries you have on your arm your elbow your hand uh, or your leg okay because when people fall see they are flailing because you know one thing about Appalachia we you learn how to fall as a child because you're going up and down the hills running sometimes you're walking and uh, you learn how to fall properly so that you can minimize your injury uh, everybody knows how to fall in Appalachia because when you're going up and down the hills you fall from something okay but a lot of these people who are doing this excuse me they don't know how to fall so when they fall they, their arms just flail their legs just flail okay they just the arms legs just go everywhere so there is no telling what kind of injuries people are having on their leg bones the arm bones and the shoulder and look let's just say that the doctors didn't find any injuries uh, 20 years down the road 40 years down the road you may have to have a shoulder replacement knee replacement who knows it's gonna hurt years down the road you may have a might you may have a very minor uh, fraction that, that they cannot pick up on x-rays but it's gonna give you problems down the road now look two days in the hospital is over two hundred thousand dollars so if you were in the hospital and you got paralysis in your neck from the neck down that could be a 13 day stay in the hospital can you imagine the bill well over a million dollars okay now I think this is a form of Russian roulette except you're using crates it's a form of Russian roulette okay and it's a distraction and what you should be particularly you young black people you young black males stop following the crowd your followers stop following the crowd and doing everything other people tell you to do stop being a robot stop being a puppet puppet masters stop being a puppet this is a distraction and what you should be doing in this time of COVID is looking for a job or trying to use your brain to find out what kind of what you can do for self-employment you should be using your creativity to find what you can do for self-employment that's what you should be doing if you can go to school if you can go to technical school or a uh, school is vocational school that's fine I mean in some areas you can go to vocational school and it's totally online so that's what you should be using your time for not this foolishness so I'm warning you about this crate challenge It's very dangerous what you all do and like I said I know something about balance and weights and things like that because I studied it when I was young okay um, these crates are not made for that they're made of a cheap plastic that break easily uh, the the plastic is sharp and, and when you fall that that plastic can just cut you I've been scratched by that plastic a few times that plastic can cut your arm 
okay these pla these crates are not made for that you should be of uh, less than 130 pounds a lot of you don't have any balance you don't have any flexibility which makes it more dangerous um a lot of people falling on your spine and i'm telling you there's no cure if you fall on your spine all the doctors can do is give you morphine to kill the pain so if you fall on your back that could be paralysis or permanent long-term pain uh some people's neck i can see it it makes me cringe they hit the back of their head that could be instant death or instant paralysis from the neck down and there's nothing the doctors can do about it um, when you when you all fall your arms are flailing okay so there's going to be a lot of damage to your arms and legs and like I said, you may not, the doctors may not see it on the x-ray now, but they're going to see it on the x-ray 5 or 10 years from now, 20 years from now, when you have to get a replacement. Okay? So, when you when you fall on your spine, that could be death or or instant paralysis. When you fall on your, when your neck hits the back of that crate, that could be instant death or paralysis from the neck down. Stop following the crowd. The crowd tells you to get on those crates and you do it without thinking. Y'all gotta think, particularly you black males. You gotta think when you stop following the crowd. You all are followers. Stop following the crowd. You keep doing what other people tell you to do. If they tell you to jump, you tell them, where's the, where's the lake? They tell you to jump in the lake, you say, well, where's the lake? You all need to stop being followers. Stop being followers of the crowd. Think. This is very dangerous what you all do. Bye.